Hi, everyone. We're still a few minutes early, and I'm going to need a moment just to get my self set up ready to take notes and try and also find my Wakefield appropriate background. There we go. <laughs> I like your background, Sean. <laughs> I, I like it too, but I I, I figured I could oh that's much more represent Wakefield represent Wakefield when I when I'm the Wakefield background sometimes makes it to my work meetings, but I try not to put the work backgrounds in Wakefield. <laughs> so very nice. I'm in Maryland, so I'm doing a blur background. I'm in my mom's house. All right, I I lived in Maryland for many years. Where are you right now? Uh, I grew up in La Plata. I'm in La Plata. Where did you okay. live? I, I went to undergraduate in Baltimore for a few years and then lived in um, Tacoma Park. Oh, I love Tacoma Park. So, yeah. Um, and nice. uh, and downtown D.C. for maybe two yeah. years, too. So, yeah. In and out of Maryland and D.C. for 10 years. So Nice. Hi, Judy, Paul, and KJ. Um. There's that, and then All righty, it's 701. I'll call things to order. Um, just showing our agenda briefly here. Um, uh, start with um, the call to order and then uh, go to public engagement in just one moment. And then vocational land, you evoke school land use issues, uh, open space recreation plan process. There's, I won't have much to say on that, Judy. I don't know if you have some things to share. Um, a conservation steward program update and then choosing the next meeting. I am also aware that one of our members has to uh, leave in about a half hour to go to another meeting. So um, so those of you who are, are here for public participation, uh, going to ask that each public participant try to stick to two minutes or less just so that we can make sure we get through other parts of our agenda. Um, apologies in advance for that request. Um, I'm just going to go in the order of the screen, recognize people here for public participation, and if I've got anything wrong, uh, let me know, or if you're here to observe rather than a comment, uh, you can just uh, pass. Uh, Lee Farrington? Hi. Um, 
I'm um, part of a group of concerned citizens, um, Wakefield's NEMT Forest, and I would just really like my to state my support that the forest not be destroyed to build the new vocational school when there's an option that exists on the playing field. This is a pristine forest rich in biodiversity that has never been built on. It should have been reviewed by MEPA, um, but because of COVID and other technicalities, it never received an environmental review. We have um, submitted a fail-safe petition with MEPA and are hoping to get a review. Thank you. Oh, should I give my address? <laughs> I'm, Always appropriate and welcome, but uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I, it's uh, 441 Washington Avenue in, in Chelsea. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, so, and just uh, so people know, we did um, circulate, uh, the members of this subcommittee have all uh, received information on uh, the MEPA petition that uh, people are preparing in the comment period that is open uh, mm -hmm. through March 3rd. So we have seen mm -hmm. uh, that. Um, as individuals as well. All right, uh, next, um, A. Simcox and D. Heath. If you could okay, so just... Thank you very much. Let me just lower my hand. Um, yeah, I, I'd just like to say that the, um, the forest is on par as a resource in Wakefield with Lake Quantipowit. Uh, we wouldn't allow filling in of Lake Quantipowit. Uh, that would cause great outrage in town. Well, this is actually more important than Lake Quantipowit, given that it is a pristine forest. It's, you know, it's a high quality forest uh, with that designation uh, as a core forest. It, it doesn't have many invasive species. It does have, it has, it has endangered um, uh, animals, um, birds, and, and, and various uh species that have been identified by, uh, by, by uh, Linda Ireland and others. Um, it's also, uh, it's, so as well as being critical habitat, it's, it's something we need to preserve for uh, looking forward in the future with climate change, increased uh, temperature and vulnerability of areas to uh, urban uh, heat island effect um, and to protect the vernal pools and wetlands, which will be destroyed uh, if, if this forest is, is, is blown up. Um, it's an oak forest. Oak trees are known to be critical habitat for many species. Uh, they're some of the richest habitat. And this is a uh, forest which uh, has mature trees. Uh, you cannot just replace those uh, with new plantings. That's, uh, it, it's not possible. Um, there's also possibly uh, Native American uh, um, artifacts that have not been uh, thoroughly researched in that area. We do know there's been findings of artifacts along the Saugus River. Very likely this was, you know, hunting ground and uh, possibly, um, there are relics left behind from thousands of years of habitation, thousands of years. And uh, we have very little forest of this quality left. Uh, the state has prioritized under their forest uh, protection program, uh, preserving to the extent possible and remaining forest. And so for us to, to, to just blow into smithereens, uh, a forest of this quality, uh, a treasure uh, within our own community, I, I think it speaks volumes about lack of regard for environmental protection. Um, I'll let Doug say a few things. He's mm -hmm. a, a hydrologist uh, and environmental scientist also. The project also includes an access road running from the proposed school to Farm Street. Uh, operation of this road during the winter months will require de-icing salt supply to two lanes of roadway plus uh, two sets of sidewalks. The icing salts will be directly injected into the adjacent wetland and burnal pool and virtually uh, kill them. So this is uh, just another sample of what environmental degradation will occur 
from this project. Thank you both. I appreciate it. And can you just identify your residents? Yes, uh, I'm Douglas Heath, Allison Simcox. We're at 28 Stedman Street in Wakefield, Mass. Okay. Thank you. Um, KJ, you're, oh, KJ, there, there you are. You, you moved on my screen. Sorry, you're next. Uh, there is a recently documented uh, population of the Eastern Whippoorwill. And, um, and then there are several bird species of greatest conservation need. This is, um, it is a, a very old forest. Uh, and you know, you can't, well, if you go there by, via the Vogue, you're looking at acres of land, acres of, acres of fields where they could put the school. And it really, it's not explainable why they're choosing tens of millions of dollars to, and, and then people need to really think about the reality of access to the school from the lower campus um, where the parking and the playing fields will be. But environmentally, uh, more, I mean, it's not even 2000, it's well over 2000. They, they, form, they used to say they were clearing 13 acres, now they say 16 acres. It's well over 2000 trees will be cut down soil grubbed, I mean, it will, it's gone forever. And, um, and then blasted down 35 feet. And uh, I think it's going to be end up being a shock to everyone. <laughs> I don't think they're going to get what they think they're going to get. And, um, and the reality of it is, uh, it, it, it's just real destruction that can't be understood. Thank you. Thank you, KJ. And can you just identify your uh, last name and residence? Karen Johnson in Beltran Street, Malden. Thank you. Um, Christine Ruth. All right. Christine, we'll come back to you if you had something to share. We didn't hear anything. Uh, Paul, Rebecca. Hi, I didn't even raise my hand. Did you just? Oh, I'm just going from left to right on the screen. No worries. I can always reach out and say thank you very much for listening to me the last four meetings. I can always interject something <clears throat> that's breaking. I want to make sure that you all have a copy of the letter that I sent to the traffic advisory Chairperson Lieutenant Anderson and the acting fire chief expressing my grave concerns about the safety um, that the new school will impose. Having a driveway with no <clears throat> sidewalk coming up the front, the hundred steps or the infamous ramp. Um, to conclude and keep it under the two minute timeline, I want to read from you to as an exhibit just to show you how poor the leadership is by the superintendent of schools, Superintendent DeBerry. I'm going to read a letter that he wrote. And he signed just a couple of weeks ago. On January 17th, he wrote, because the Massachusetts School Building Administration asked him to, he wrote to David Hoff, City of Melrose Commission on Disability. And he says, thank you for your concerns and individuals and people with disabilities regarding access at Northeast Folk. In response to this, we offer the following. Our proposed project is designed to be fully compliant with Massachusetts Architectural Access Board Regulations 521. Specifically, the access route from the upper to the lower fields is compliant with 521 Section 20, Accessible Route 521-24, Ramps 521-27. Furthermore, it, confirms, it conforms to universal design principles by providing a common path for travel for all individuals to the extent possible. Pedestrian vehicle routes have been designed to allow appropriate snow removal equipment and maintenance requirements have been reviewed. Further, he concludes, we want to call attention to the fact that our existing campus has existing similar challenges with stairs, ramps, and hillsides. That's nauseating. That is so far from reality. I am not an architect. Thank goodness we have an architect on the call. But I know that unified architectural design principles are all about designing for access, not putting barriers up, destroying the environment, and trying to get a LEED certification. Thanks. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Brian Thompson. All 
All right, Brian, I'll move on because not hearing anything. Uh, Linda Ireland. Yes, I'm Linda Ireland in Melrose. And uh, I would like to remind people that this is ancient, very hard bedrock that is filled with water. And the geotechnical reports are warning that there will be a considerable volume of water to be managed both during and after construction. That the, the water will be funneled during construction to an open uh, retention pool in the baseball field that um, the, the actual process of construction requires blasting out a level shelf. And in blasting that shelf, you're gonna create a 650 foot long cliff wall up to 35 feet high. And the reports warn that this, this rock is so brittle and filled with water that there will be ice jacking and requirement for continual maintenance. This is the, the location of a mature oak forest with roots that are penetrating deep into the bedrock, storing carbon and managing stormwater. Once you strip the soil and clear the forest, you just have bedrock. And so you can't actually retain water. You have to manage it. And you've got to manage it by uh, sending it to retention ponds and changing the way water flows so that some of the wetlands will end up with five times as much water and five times as much chloride, and some of them will end up starved of water. So you're completely changing the dynamics of an entire system, which right now has wood frogs waking. It has spotted salamander breeding. The American woodcock are starting to dance. The Eastern whippoorwill will be returning. There are five birds of greatest conservation need nesting in what is just an astonishing habitat. There are grandmothers and grandchildren who walk this forest. It's a magical place for children because there is no, there are no invasive species. You can see all the way through the forest. It's lined with huckleberry. This is a, a truly amazing place. And I hope that all of you have a had a chance to visit and see how special this habitat is. There is nothing like it in Breakheart. It's a Southeastern exposure of a mature oak pine, acidic rock outcrop forest. And because of the way the forest, it's, it's such a difficult environment, the trees are not quite as tall and it's more park-like and the sun comes through. And it's just a remarkable place for people to find peace and sanctuary. And, and during the pandemic, the trails in there deepen. These are trails that have been used for decades. And there was no reason to sacrifice this, except that during the pandemic, the building committee was meeting over Zoom and looking at a satellite map. They didn't even realize that there was a hill for the most part. And some of the members of the committee as late as January still thought that the school was being built on the football field. There was, the project was so complex and the satellite photographs so difficult to interpret that there was really a fundamental lack of understanding of what was happening. I beseech you to, to think hard about how this will change the character of Wakefield. No longer will we, will be, we won't have easy access to break art. They'll be limited to 12 parking spots during the day. And now there's a shared parking lot. The Wakefield's only core habitat and rare species habitat uh, will be gone. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Linda. Um, there, a user came on with the screen name iPhone V. I don't know if that's um, somebody who wanted to give comments. If you want to introduce. Uh, identify yourself. It might be me. I don't. My name is Eleanor Axelrod. I'm a Wakefield resident. Um, I apologize. I just got out of work late. Um, I'm not sure if people have already offered these <clears throat> comments with respect to the VOC, but um, as of this date, we still do not know how long blasting will go on. We've been told it's only six weeks but it's more likely that it will be closer to six months. And if you think about the environmental impact, I mean, you've heard the ecological impacts of blasting down 30 feet, 35 feet on one side and then putting 20 feet of fill on the other side of the hill. But with all that blasting, you also have greenhouse gases that are emitted during that process. 
nitrous oxide, oxides of nitrogen, nitride. Um, you know, so, so it's just not sustainable and not environmentally friendly in, at, in any way, shape or form. Um, so I think people should also be aware of just how destructive it is. And again, they did have viable options on the, on the football field. They said as much to the MSBA. Um, so, so that's really it. But I, I think it's up to people in town to you know, learn the information um, and advocate for the right course of action. There's no reason for us to, to kind of tolerate something that's so profoundly destructive and honestly, it's going, you see the plans. These kids are not gonna enjoy going to this campus if they have to climb a hundred steps every day. Anyway, that's it. And thank you. And I apologize for being out of breath. Oh, no worries. Thank, thank you, Eleanor. Um, Christine Rue, I see you have your hand up. Um, did you wanna provide comments now? Yes, thank you. Thank you for taking my comments and for your service to the town. Um, on the, on the committee. Um, yeah, so I'm a Wakefield resident, 22 Woodland Road. And um, you know, I've, ha I've had a long career in the environmental field. I was a research professor at Tufts for a number of years. And I um, studied and trained young scientists in some of the um, greatest forest habitats in the world and directed a climate education center and, uh, <laughs> But here, I am just speaking as a private citizen. I, I'm just really so appalled. It, it, it's, a, it's a callous um, undertaking, really. And I, I think what we're discovering now is that a number of projects you know, moved through the process um, during the pandemic without the proper level of scrutiny. I think that, you know, people were working from home, they were trying to figure out how to do Zoom and the, 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 the process for approving this project, um, it, it happened during that time. I know that folks said there were a lot of public meetings, but I mean, schools were closed during a big portion of this time. So, you know, it, there might've been public meetings, but there wasn't public engagement. People didn't really understand um, where the school was going and the ramifications of it. And so I'd just like you to consider, you know, the damage to the land, you know, as a, a land use committee now, um, you know, there's nine, nine areas of environmental damage that we've outlined in the, the MEPA petition. And you know, they're really hard to ignore. It's, it's not something that's just whimsical, you know, it, there's pollution, construction impacts, wetland impacts, groundwater impacts, stormwater impacts, impacts to cultural and native um, American possibly heritage sites. Um, so I hope that you will have, um, the courage of, sort of independent thought, as I know there's a lot of support. I mean, we support the school. We just don't support it in that location. And it's, it can be hard to sort of break out of a certain mindset that um, it must be built in this location. And I, I hope that the committee will have an independent thought uh, and the courage for that and, and, and you know, raise the questions or carry forth the questions that we've been raising and, and support our petition. Just all we're asking in that is that a few, a full environmental impact report be done. And, and, I, and I don't see how that could, um, that's not gonna derail anything. That's not gonna jeopardize anything. That's just asking for a thorough review and, and one hasn't been done yet. So thank you very much for listening. Right, thank you, Christine. Um, Brian? Uh, can you hear me? I'm not sure that my speaker is working. 
it's it, it's not a great quality connection. So uh, speak loudly and briefly so we can get the main points of uh, what you want to share. But it is a bit tough to hear you. I'm an architect. I've practiced for over 50 years. I have two degrees. I've done projects all over the United States and then some in Europe. And I have never seen a, an architectural project so ill-conceived in my life. Uh, it is amazing to me that a reputable architect could do such a thing. Uh, quite apart from the architecture, though, the environmental damage it does will forever stain this institution. It will never be known as a sustainable. It can't be. They are destroying a living forest when they don't have to. In fact, a better, more environmentally sensitive better piece of architecture could be done on the land they have. I urge the, the committee to, in the strongest possible terms, condemn this. You may not have the, the power to stop it, but you have a bully pulpit and you're speaking for environmental sustainability in Wakefield. And this is the opposite of sustainability, regardless of what the lead points may uh, uh, try to uh, uh, give it status, it can never be considered anything but in environmental degradation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brian. Um, everyone I see who's on here has had an uh, opportunity to provide some public participation. As I mentioned, we are on a tight timeline just uh, before we lose one of our members. So I will uh, end the public participation public participation part here, but thank you all for your comments. I just did want to share a tiny bit of context. I know some of you have given comments to us and uh, the larger ESC committee before some of you have not. Um, we're a subcommittee of the Environmental Sustainability Committee, and the subcommittees are there to try to get extra work done in between the monthly meetings of the Sustainability Committee. Uh, and the committee itself does not serve a regulatory function in Wakefield. It's there to promote environmental sustainability concerns. So we don't have regulatory oversight over this. Um, however, um, the public comments that you've provided today and that others have been providing have gone a long way towards educating us as members. Um, and also you are addressing uh, in the roles as representatives to this subcommittee, um, a town councilor, as well as an employee of the conservation uh, um, Town Department of Conservation, who also serves on the Conservation Commission. So I just wanted to make it clear what we can't do, but also what impact these comments do have. Um, and it should be posted in a day or two. The Environmental Sustainability Committee did um, discuss and agree on a statement of concern regarding this and sent that to members of the building committee at the NEMT, uh, school officials, other local officials, etc. Um, again, with our role is not to say definitively this is wrong or whatever. We don't claim to have the expertise to make that assessment, but saying that environmental sustainability needs to be prioritized in these processes, whether it be approval processes or the planning processes going on at the school. So um, uh, so uh, that we will be available on the town's website in a day or two to share with you. So I just want to let you know what we have, and we will continue uh, to see uh, and, and stay informed with this. Um, we had also reached out to the NEMT last year and asked to be uh, looped in and uh, and used as a resource for this, and that didn't happen, and we reminded the school officials that that didn't happen. So just wanted to let you know um, uh, what we some of what we have been doing and uh, also uh, that this but that we don't have an approval role in this, although other groups in town do and may continue to do so depending on how the process plays out from here. Thank you again for your time. Um, you're welcome to stay on, but uh, the public participation part here is over. Uh, our next topic was um, the Vogue. <laughs> so um, uh, Julie, Myra, um, uh, Judy, I don't know if uh, any of you had things to share. I had one or two fast things to mention, but. Um, it's been our topic. Anything? Go ahead, Judy. One thing I would mention is the energy park that was mentioned at your last um, full ESC meeting. And the Conservation Commission hasn't taken a vote yet, but there is um, not a full agreement on whether the land swap is what they would choose. So it's not, um, 
I think it was kind of mischaracterized that they were just holding off on a vote. And also the Maple Way lot, um, there's not going to be any protection of that. And that's an issue that they've had. And I don't know if Julie knows anything else, if anything has been talked about as far as that. I, I don't on the Maple Way. I mean, I was the conservation call that I was on, I suggested it's something that I think we should look at. Um, Judy, I don't know whether any, have you had a call since the one I was on the Conservation Commission? No, it wasn't on the last agenda. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's worth trying, to, if we if we are able to put a canopy there, to try to put it into a conservation um, easement or whatever it would take to protect that. Right, right. And that's what the commission had wanted, but they, it, the proponents weren't unwilling. I mean, they don't have the power to do that. It was. I think it's a town. I think it's a town meeting vote. I think this is a vote of us, all of us, you know, public, everybody as a legislative body. So, if that's something we want to do, I think it's something we try to get on to the the next town meeting. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure about that process, but it didn't seem like there was a willingness to. I mean, they would allow the trees to be planted, but. Um, I don't think that's reasonable if they could be taken down in a couple of right. days. No, I, I definitely understand. I definitely understand the concern. Um, and there was I mean, also I'm, some yeah. dispute about the um, two and a half acres behind Farm Street, whether that was an equitable portion of the lot. Yeah, I don't. A couple have, I don't, of members that expressed that. Yeah, I don't. I don't have an opinion really yeah. on. I mean, they weren't opposed to the that. energy park. That wasn't the issue at all. Yeah. I mean, I think everybody knows. I'm a but the Maple Way the the park. Go ahead, is town land, right? It's just not yes. in a conservation easement. It's not It's not gas and light land. It's town land no, that gas and light correct. is investing in. Right. So right. that's they would pay for the trees issue, to right? be like, in. like the town forest, like, you know, we had been talking about, can we increase the conservation status of a number of parcels of town land um, right. in the but, town forest? Right, the trees could be planted, but there's no guarantee that they couldn't be taken down in a couple of years because it's been discussed that if the town wants to do something with that lot, then they would use it. That's why they didn't want a conservation restriction on it. Let so me ask you, Judy, are we doing a full open space plan through the yes. and 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 I assume that Maple Way is gonna be looked at as part of that, is that yes. correct? Yes. So, I mean, maybe as part of that recommendation, it's me. I mean, I, don't, I mean, I don't know. I'm sure it's a third party doing the study, but that might be an interesting recommendation. I think when we get that open space plan, maybe we can look at it holistically. Probably not in the time frame we're looking at for the energy park, though. Right. That's the problem. So that's yeah. I I think it was the way I interpreted it. It was that conservation was just pushing back, but there wasn't um, background given as to what the reasoning was. So I just wanted to clarify that. Okay, there, that's there helpful. No, I have issue. not been super involved. That's helpful. Um, oh. And I was, I mean, in full disclosure, I was not at the environmental committee where we, where they unanimously passed um, the statement, but I just read, I've read it and it's excellent. Um, so I know to members of the public, this is a, a very concerning issue. I, I really think that the environmental sustainability committee gave it serious thought um, and has issued a statement that you know talks about consideration of sustainability issues um, as well as mitigation issues. Yeah. So hopefully that will move the needle a bit. I thought it was very well, well written. Yes, yeah. I agree. Excellent, very, very good job. And that's a thanks to Sean for writing in, I think. <laughs> yes. um, I also, I wanna make sure that we're not conflating here though issues of the energy park and issues of the book. Um, you know, the energy park is a town issue. There's a, I understand there's a process for that. Um, that's related also to the high school, which is also not related to the VOC. Um, I think we've all been wrestling a little bit with the process of the VOC. And we all know, like Sean said, like we've been trying to get conversations with the VOC for a year and a half. I, I would push back and say there, I'm not sure there was a transparent process. I don't know what the process was. I think for our high school, there was a very transparent process. I mean, I've been in, where our high school, um, I've, I myself have attended probably 10 meetings. My husband has attended another 10 meetings. I mean, it's been a very, you know, that has been, that has been the process that, that the VOC should have done with all of its sending communities. And I think we all would be feeling better about um, sort of the process and they would have heard a lot of this feedback a lot earlier. Likewise, the energy park, I feel like is also not connected to the, I mean, I understand the energy park will support the VOC building, 
but it is not that issue we should not be conflating with the issues around the the design of the boat building that i feel like is its own issue and so i just want to push back like i know it's under the um, the agenda item of the vote um but uh but it's sort of like three to me three separate i mean i i'm very pro energy park i think it really pushes forward our environmental conservation goals in so many ways for our high school um as well as supporting the vote um in whatever place it ends up um, but I but I just don't want to like bring these issues together because I think there are really legitimate concerns around the vote and the process and the placement and what you know uh, and the 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 impact it's it's not clear to me as private you know it's private land so it's not clear to me you know I think that it to Sean's point it's in a regulatory place um, but uh, but the other things are to me are very separate. Um. Yeah, I, so a few things that um, were just on my mind about this. So I did send around the information about the uh, comment period for this MEPA, this pe MEPA petition about there not having been a review. Um, we will not have an ESC meeting before that closes. So there's not, and we're not, for, for those public participants who are still watching, we're not allowed to deliberate on these things um, outside of those meetings. So there won't be an ESC contribution to that. Um, but I do just want to remind people, and if they feel um, it's appropriate as individuals to give input into that, uh, to do so. Um, I also note that when we wrote the statement just a few days ago, there were 4,800 signatures on the Build the Vogue, Save the Forest petition. There's now over 5,100, <laughs> right? So that has gotten momentum as well. And I just, you know, um, uh, so, so I, you know, I think all that, again, I've personally undergone a transformation on my level of concern with this. And um, and, and I think that this is something that we can raise, uh, continue to raise information about without uh, using a town committee as a, an advocacy space, which is the needle we're trying to thread. Um, one thing that came up, Judy, I want to ask you about came up in public participation, because it was not something I was aware of before it was mentioned uh, today. Uh, this idea of the construction plan also limiting the number of parking spaces on the Wakefield access side to break hard. Is that something that you're familiar with or anyone else on that? Um, I'm not familiar with that. I don't know if that's an area that's jurisdictional. Okay. Um, so I I had, just, it hasn't been discussed. I, I hadn't heard about it. I thought that was interesting in two ways. One, um, that's something that might engage people who otherwise have been less engaged. Uh, <laughs> for better or worse, um, that that seems like a notable reduction if that is accurate. Also, just because since part of what we've been looking at is access to recreational opportunities, and also that other groups in town look at that, that just seems, if that is correct, that's something that we might want to share with uh, the other town committees that are responsible for looking at, uh, you know, access to recreation, access to, you know, the Council on Aging, other things, uh, access to these opportunities. So, um, cause that would be a significant reduction in addition to the environmental, uh, impacts of this project. So, um, I think we got a lot of time spent on this. So if, if there's no other comments on the vote, uh, from subcommittee members, I'll suggest we move on, but, um, all right. Um, the next thing, the next agenda item is almost an agenda, not item. Cause I just wrote this up, but, uh, Judy, I'll have a, at least one question for you. You might have more insights. The OSRP process, the open space recreation planning process. Um, I haven't heard much as a member. I don't know if there's more going on behind the scenes. I did reach out almost a month ago now to, um, the, the consultants at Horsley Witten and got back kind of a, non-committal answer about you know this will be something that uh we're, we're working on um scheduling uh do not yet confirm a workshop date and that um uh that uh she'd sign off until we regrouped as a committee i'm just curious uh the timeline for that was meant to be an early march osrp workshop so that i, I would think that would have to be scheduled by now to happen in early march uh and be publicized and also a uh, possible community survey to be you know, so I have nothing to report as a representative of that process. I just, Judy, do you know if the process is behind schedule at this point or? No, I don't think so. They were trying, they've met with um, the recreation director, council on aging director. Um, they jumped on a couple of meetings, council on aging, youth council, um, to try to get some baseline ideas and um, a 
kind of a direction point, especially from the recreation director. I have a Zoom meeting with the consultants on um, Friday and they still are planning the committee meeting for um, sometime in early March. And then there would be the public um, session and the survey would follow that. They're trying to um, space it away from the master plan process. So it's not overlapping and it's not overwhelming people. Okay. Well, um, if there's an opportunity just to, to mention that there's not been communications out to the committee members in, in a while. And you know the communication I had from a month ago is only because I wrote and asked, is there anything that I missed? Um, yeah, well, I think so, um, they were having some trouble getting in touch with some of the departments. I think they were waiting to get some um, feedback from them before they okay. um, convened the committee. All right, well, and it wasn't holidays. <laughs> It really was just a question, not meant to be a gripe, and uh, no, it sounds no, like good news understood. if it is still moving ahead no, and understood. hasn't been backburnered or, or or otherwise. Uh, um, no, but of course. Um, all right, so I have nothing to report on that, just because we haven't. Uh, so that that's all. I think we can move on from that one. Um, and then the final thing, uh, Judy, I'll turn things over to you. If there's an update on Conservation Corps, if that's still the name, and if that's been passed. Um, um, I, Tom Mullen is requesting a waiver for the volunteers. So I drafted um, just a sample that was borrowed from another town and he's reviewing that now. But um, we can start, the commission okayed the volunteers. So I'm going to talk to Rebecca. I'm hoping we can lay it out tomorrow, at least have a couple of trails um, earmarked for the volunteers. But I know you had mentioned there was someone who had some volunteers. Um, Dan Noren has been working on uh, volunteer engagement, and we already have a list of people who um, are interested in volunteering in general. We okay. held up. We we haven't advertised this because the last time that this group met, uh, that you were with us, you had said that it hadn't been passed by Conservation Commission yet, so right. we held off. We didn't want to jump the gun with that. But if it's been approved by Conservation Commission, um, maybe you and I can email um, separately just about some language that we could use to help promote that both to the volunteers who have already identified themselves, but also uh, we've actually got some momentum now with the public messaging. It's going right. better than right. I cynically thought it might have uh, at first. So then also to help drum up some more people. And we also have a, on the um, on the public education and engagement subcommittee, we also have a student representative now. So, um, and was it decided that under 18s could be part of this without triggering um, new liability concerns or? I don't think that was, it, the waiver I think specifies 18. And well, okay. the waiver specifies they'd have to be supervised by a parent and the waiver would have to be signed by the parent. Okay. I, the commission, I don't know, they were in the same position I was. How is this going to be managed? You know, to be mm -hmm. sure that the student is supervised and that's kind of a tricky. Okay. I mean, I don't know how you do that. Oh, great. Yeah, so let's follow up over email. If you could even just give me two to three sentences to build from, and we'll turn that into some social media friendly great. stuff, as well as reach out to the volunteers who have already identified themselves, and hopefully we can have some bodies yeah, ready great. to go. Um, okay. Gl glad so, to hear so, it. So, I mean, I, I know a couple other people that I've talked to over the years, um, and I'm sure, Julie, you do too, that I think would be worth reaching out to also. Um, so what would be the sort of the preferred timing in terms of getting people on board? I mean, are, are we thinking a model where people sign up for a section of trail and they visit it every month? Um, yes. Or is it like a one-time kind of cleanup in the spring where we kind of like do a big push and then a maintenance plan? What are what are people thinking? Because spring's not that far, but I feel like, um, you know, since it is new, we there could be a big push and then a, I don't know. I, I don't know what people are thinking. I think ideally it would be someone who's committed to once a month. That's how other towns run it. Mm -hmm. So it's people that generally walk the trails anyways, and then they just report back once a month on conditions. Great. I mean, that's what I'd like to see. All right. Thank you so much, Judy. Um, so um, I know we're going to lose Julie in a minute. So uh, scheduling. Sorry, I have to go to the recycling yeah. subcommittee. They're working on my line. Can I? Can I? Are there? Is there a, a 
matters not anticipated there is but the first the next one is still um uh just okay. picking a date so if i I'll, I'll go as quickly as i can so we'll oh, fine. sticking with wednesdays at seven um uh really it seems uh the main options would be the 15th which would be a month from now or the 29th if we're going on our um sticking to our we can meet slightly less than every month so votes on the 15th versus the 22nd i'm not available which is why it's not an option so 15th 29th indifference. i'm out of town on the 15th out of the country actually so nice 29th sounds good. 29th, 29th works for me. All right, great. Then um, uh, 29th at seven o'clock, and I will get that on um, the schedule. Okay, uh, Myra, matters not anticipated. Well, I just, I just was, I, I was just inquiring as we think about, I, I this idea of Maple Way. I think we should follow up on. I still, as everybody knows, I'm like a broken record. I have my my uh, eyes on this property on on Butler Ave. Um, and I know that this is an area where there's a lot of interest in that property and a lot of things that the town could do with it. Um, I just, I just, and maybe, I, I don't know if some of our community members are still on board or still on the phone, um, but just keeping an eye on that property too. And I, and I don't know, um, you know, I think it will end up with some kind of hybrid plan for that, those 11 acres. Um, and I think that's okay. But, but if we could save, if we could just keep it on our radar screen as a potential opportunity um, to to save some green space and to again factor in a consideration of the value of green space as we think about what to do with our resources. Um, and well, so there is that, a pretty that what there is a pretty good wetland area there. So that yeah would yeah and, and some of it can't be built on I know because it's capped. Right. Um, but as we go back, you know, I haven't been there, Julie, for since your uh, since your like uh, meet and greet. You know, that was really fun. Um, but I just think that that land back there uh, is really beautiful. And again, there's some ledge and there's just some. Um, it is amazing. And I really hope this open space plan land. will consider that as well. I think um, it must because it's town owned. Yeah. And so we do own it. And, you know, we have some money invested into it as a community. But, um, you know, but I don't know. So I just as we as we have these conversations and as we think about getting ahead of some of these processes so that we're not, con you know, we're not always catching up. That was, is one that I just want to keep on the radar screen. Well, and and Judy, I mean, once this, what do we think the time frame for getting the open space plan done is? And I know you just talked about it, but um, I mean, because when we do it, like this group should look at it. And then I really think maybe we come to town meeting and make some proposals. Um, no, I agree. Um, they're, hopeful that it would be finished by November. Okay. Which With I the, think is pretty good. That yeah. I, I just happen to have the sketch the possible sketch that the idea that there would be a town council planning board. Well no, I guess that, that that was what was confusing in this thing when we last discussed it, that they were listing the master plan things in. So I guess the master plan is meant to be presented to town council in mid June. So I guess there's not a date for a presentation to town council on OSRP. Right. Yet. They would yeah. That would June be would be the second yeah. workshop, so it'd be sometime after that. Right. Well, I'm hoping it well, gets more people interested in me too. the value of open space because that is lacking. I mean, even the vote, yeah. there are a handful of people, and that's consistent. I, the, I, I think it's going to be an amazing. There are a report. lot of people who are interested in that space in the vote, and it right, is but there aren't a lot of people that if they're not at, I think. A, Part of the problem is if they're not visible at the meetings, it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't people think are interested people are online, there. but um, I and I, you know, I think there's a lot of potential uh, of things that we that we could do with our spaces. I, you know, I'm I'm excited for the great open space plan because I think it will um, move us forward. And I think you know, it's just even fully cataloging the opportunities that we have for better conservation and the opportunities that we have for um, different ways to use land, I think would be great. Cause we, I know that there's little spots around town mm -hmm. that, that are town owned. Um, and so uh, it'll just be good to. Yeah. to well, and I, I mean, I know Judy, I've said this to you, I'm tired as town council to like bit and piece these things out to other people. Like I want a comprehensive plan on the open space, which yeah. is where we're, we're going towards. I'm hoping it's going to highlight um, the biodiversity need in town and not just that we have open spaces that we have to 
use for something, that we have to have some open space that are left as open space and why that's important, what the functions are and why that's, especially with resilience. I mean, that's the only way we're gonna combat climate resilience and that doesn't seem to get across. Yeah, it's, it's that's where the MVP comes distance. in. Yep, where the MVP right. comes in. Right. And frankly, also, it's it's to me, it's also the balance to this 40A. Like I'm very in favor kind of of the 40A and the and the need for housing, but there's got to be a balance to it. And that's where hopefully right. we can find this balance. But that's where I wish conservation was involved. They weren't included as part of that working group. Mm. So why yeah. well, we haven't formed a working group. You guys want to be well, on the working group? Well, it was mentioned that it was um, town councilors, ESC, planning board. Yeah, but on Monday night, members. we added two residents. I don't see why we can't go back and add conservation commission. That's an excellent point. Yeah. I mean, it's it. that's a gripe I have all the time, that conservation is left off. Um, that's a really good point. I will bring that up to see if we can get you guys, somebody on that working group. If you think you'd have somebody who'd be able to willing to, to serve on it. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> You know, all right, you guys, I really have to run. I'm really sorry. I got to run to the recycling Good committee. Good to see you. Thank, thank you, Julie. Thank you um, all. Thanks to the community for reaching out, Sean. You're doing a great job. No, thanks. Um, and uh, Myra, just since you had mentioned also this, ca the cattling, I, I, did you look at even the, did you go back and look at the old um, open space recreation plan? The one I haven't yet, but I, but I will, I'll get it. So when I felt like that is, is even though it's outdated, it's, it is a really amazing cataloging in there of town assets, not just from recreation and open space point of view, but even from a heritage point of view, it was a document that I wish that somebody had handed to me, you know, seven and a half years ago when I moved to Wakefield. So, um, it's worth taking a look at that. Um, and right. we actually, um, and we publicized that a bit through the social media stuff, and we agreed we're going to keep um, re-pushing that one because it kind of is the nicest document out there that I've seen, just saying what some of these resources are all in one place uh, in the town of Wakefield. So, yeah, and that's, I mean, that's I, you know, I take a, I take such a universal view. I mean, I tell you, I, 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 I think I said on the main meeting, I, uh, I had to drop my car off at Fahey Tire and walking from along New Salem Street is not my favorite. It does not, it's not, doesn't feel safe. So I, I did walk on the uh, bike path mm. uh, and it was, it was a game changer. Uh, it was really, I mean, there were some students on it already. I know we're not supposed to be on it, but there were students on it walking home safely. Um, and it really, you know, just thinking about, you know, that's not, not a big quarter of land. Um, but I, it's going to be an incredible resource when it's available. And so um, I, I just think, yeah, just thinking creatively about all the different things that we could be doing now. We just need a bike rack along New Salem Street and we'll like, you know, well, it's also like opens up, you know, economic development opportunities. Um, I think for, for different parts of town, it brings people to different parts. So, I mean, I, you know, I, I think all of that stuff is, is really exciting. Um, and I, you know, I'm one where I, I think I've been to most of like the trails that we have in town. In addition to, we spent a lot of time in the woods during COVID <laughs> um, and since then. And so um, I'm going to look at that and just kind of figure out where I've not been. Hmm. Great. Judy, sorry, you were had something you were. No, I was just going to say the first section um, that they've been reviewing is section five, the inventory. That's oh, where they, I think they're going to focus the majority because it does need to be changed. or It doesn't read well. I, it needs to have a better focus on the, it, I don't know that there needs to be such emphasis on the cemeteries and the schools and, mm -hmm. you know, different, that can be a smaller mm -hmm. portion, yeah. but I think the more vital areas will be highlighted. Great. But after I meet my meeting, I'll um, email you and give you the highlights and give you some feedback on that. Great, thank you. And also do send me a few lines on Conservation Corps that we can use to yes. help uh, advertise drum up members. And um, if there's nothing else, um, maybe somebody wanna to move to adjourn? I'll move to adjourn. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye, all right. So we are adjourned at 7.52 PM. Um, Great. Thank you all. I'll see you all at Thank the you. Uh, full meeting. Thank you. Know, you. Good night. In a month. Thanks, Paul. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Paul. Good night.